Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through the nucleic acid section of AQA A-level biology, which contains nucleotide structure and DNA replication. Also, I'll be going through some exam style questions and their mark schemes, as I know from experience how bad the mark schemes can be. Also, I'll be putting timestamps in the comments section if you want to skip to the relevant sections that you want to look at. So let's get started. So first, I'm going to just give you a brief introduction to what is DNA and what is RNA. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and its basic job is to hold genetic information that codes for proteins. And RNA is ribonucleic acid, and its job is to transfer just genetic information from DNA to ribosomes. And the interesting thing about ribosomes is they are partly made of RNA as well. So this is kind of the structure of DNA, the double helix shape, which we will get onto later. And this is the RNA shape, which is kind of like a single helix. So the next thing you need to know is about the structure of nucleotides. Now, a nucleotide is the monomer that DNA and RNA are made of. So therefore, DNA and RNA are polymers of nucleotides, which are called polynucleotides. So this is the structure of a nucleotide. Here we have a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, pentose means a five carbon sugar, hence the prefix pent. And in DNA, this is deoxyribose, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid. And in RNA, it's just ribose. You don't really need to know the difference between the two, but you need to know that DNA is deoxyribose, RNA is ribose. And a nitrogenous base, which form the backbone of the double helix or the single helix. Now, the bases included in DNA are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. However, in RNA, thymine is replaced by uracil. Adenine, guanine and cytosine stay the same. So you need to know that these bases pair each other. However, they only pair with a, with a specific base. So guanine pairs with cytosine and adenine pairs with thymine or adenine pairs with uracil in RNA. Now you need to know that guanine and cytosine form three hydrogen bonds, as you can see here, one, two, three. But adenine and thymine or adenine and uracil only form two hydrogen bonds, as you can see, one, two. Now, base pairing is extremely important in processes such as DNA replication, transcription, and also forming the base of the double helix structure. Now, don't worry, you don't need to know the structures of the bases, you just need to know how they pair with each other. So three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine, and two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine, or adenine and uracil. Now, the next thing you need to know is the, about the condensation of nucleotides. We have mentioned condensation a lot in the recent videos. So the condensation of two nucleotides produces a dinucleotide, which we can see here. Now the link here, the bond, is called a phosphodiester bond. That is key to remember, as it becomes very important later on. I'll just highlight it. Oh no, that's the pen. Highlighter, that's better. Phosphodiester, as it, and you can see it more clearly here. Phosphodiester bond right here. So now we're going to talk about polynucleotides. Polynucleotides are a condensation of many nucleotides, as you can already guess. So you need to know kind of the differences between the polynucleotides of DNA and RNA. One of the main differences is that DNA consists of two polynucleotide chains or two strands of nucleotides. However, RNA is just one polynucleotide chain and this is relatively short as well. Now the next thing that you probably already know is that DNA is a double helix but RNA is just a single helix as it is just one polynucleotide chain 
as you can see here, this is a DNA double helix and this is an RNA single helix. So now I'm going to talk to you about DNA replication or semi-conservative DNA replication. The term semi-conservative here is crucial to know. Semi-conservative. Let's get my pen up. So the term semi-conservative means that one strand comes from the original DNA, so the DNA that is being replicated. I'll just change my pen to red. So one strand comes from the original DNA, so the one that's being replicated, and the other is from a newly synthesised strand, which will become more clearer as I explain the process of DNA replication. So as you can see from here, this is the original DNA that is to be replicated, and it's been replicated into two DNA strands and as you can see one strand this blue strand here and a newly synthesized strand which is in red. This is extremely important as it ensures genetic continuity between generations of cells allowing development of organisms and um, genetic stability etc etc. Now the First step in semi-conservative DNA replication is that DNA helicase unwinds the double helix by breaking hydrogen bonds between complementary bases in the polynucleotide strand. Now this enzyme here, this is DNA helicase. This is extremely important. The hydrogen bonds are between the base pairs, so basically what DNA helicase does is breaks the base pairs apart, but you need to remember that it breaks the hydrogen bonds. This forms two single-stranded DNA strands, which we call template strands. Now the next thing that happens is that new DNA nucleotides that have been synthesised through biochemical pathways are attracted to their exposed bases because of specific base pairing and they base pair with their complementary base. As you can see here these are the template strands indicated by the arrows and these are the newly synthesized DNA nucleotides. Now you need to emphasize that, that they are DNA nucleotides. You don't want to confuse this with transcription where it would be RNA nucleotides. So they then base pair with the complementary bases. However, the backbone, sugar phosphate backbone, is not formed yet, which is the next step. So the sugar phosphate backbone or phosphodiester bonds are formed by the enzyme DNA polymerase. It's really important that you remember this. And you can't confuse it with RNA polymerase, which is involved in the process of transcription, which is later on in the course. Now, th what this does it is that it joins adjacent nucleotides, these new nucleotides, in a five prime to three prime direction to form phosphodiester bonds. Now, this is where it kind of gets a bit tricky, and something I used to struggle with: the concept of five prime to three prime. Now, the arrows here just indicate the DNA polymerase. So the five DNA has different ends. The five prime end and the three prime end. So it's called five prime. The five prime end is called five prime end because it basically means the phosphate group, which is on the fifth carbon. So we can normally count from here. So carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. So that's why it's called the five prime end. And this is the three prime end, which includes the hydroxyl group on the third carbon. So one, two, three. Now, DNA newly replicated DNA must be synthesized in the five prime to three prime direction as the DNA polymerase is only complementary to and can only bind to the three prime end. And DNA strands are what we call anti-parallel. As you can see, the three prime end 
and then opposite here we've got a 5 prime end. So they're not the same. If the DNA chains were parallel, then we would have a 3 prime and a 3 prime, 5 prime and a 5 prime, but we don't. This anti-parallel character means that the new nucleotides are added 5 prime to 3 prime, as it is the opposite to the 3 prime end that the DNA polymerase can bind to. This will become probably a bit more clear when we go on to the exam questions. So the last piece of content that you need to know is about the measles and Stahl experiment, which provided evidence for the semi-conservative replication of DNA. So evidence for semi-conservative replication. Now, the first thing that they did is they had two test tubes. And what they did was they added the DNA of E. coli. So they added that DNA in, in the tube. What they did is they grew it in two nitrogen isotopes. 14 nitrogen, which is the light isotope, and 15 nitrogen, which is the what we call heavy isotope. Now, the reason why they use nitrogen isotopes is because nitrogen is a vital component in DNA, so in the nitrogen spaces. And what Mises and Stahl did was they grew this DNA from E. coli in these two nitrogen isotopes and allowed it to replicate for one generation, which allowed the nitrogen isotopes to be incorporated into the E. coli DNA. The next thing they did was they took a sample from each of the 14N and the 15N. So, and they grew them together for one generation. So both DNA containing, both nitrogen isotopes were grown together for one generation, which incorporated both isotopes into the E. coli DNA. Now the next thing they did is they got all three tubes just draw three tubes here. One contained the 14N, one contained just 15N, one contained both. And what they did is they spun these in a centrifuge which allowed the DNA to settle to form a band so you can see how the DNA was incorporated more easily. And this is what they found. So with the 14N, they found that there was a band near the top of the solution as 14N is the light isotope. Now with 15N, 15 nitrogen, they found that the band settled near the bottom as 15N is a heavier and denser isotope. Now what was interesting with the 14N and 15N was that the band settled somewhere in the middle, which provided the conclusion that DNA replication was semi-conservative as both isotopes were incorporated into, incorporated into the DNA. So that's all the content that you need to know, and now we can get on to some exam questions. So I'll just get my highlighter out now. We'll call it yellow. Now the first question here asks us to describe the role of DNA polymerase in DNA replication for one mark. So you don't need to go into a lot of detail at all as it is only one mark. So as we've said before, the DNA polymerase joins DNA nucleotides to form the new DNA strand. You don't need to write that phosphodiester bonds are formed as it is only a one mark question, so you don't need to write very much at all. So if we look at the mark scheme, it joins the nucleotides to form a new strand, which we wrote, so we would get that mark. Here they accept joins sugar and phosphate slash form sugar phosphate backbone, but it says reject forms base pairs slash hydrogen bonds because this is not what DNA polymerase does. You need to be careful there. And as it says reject, you don't get any marks, no matter if you put another point that is correct alongside 
this point here. So the next question, the table shows a percentage of each base in the DNA from three different organisms, humans, the grasshopper and the virus. Now, humans and grasshoppers have very similar percentages of each base in their DNA, but they are very different organisms. So as you can see, it is pretty different. I mean, very similar, as you can see. So in actual fact, they have the exact same percentage of thymine, as you can see here, 29.4 and 29.4. And the others, other bases, are very similar as well. Now the question says, use your knowledge of DNA structure and function to explain how this is possible for two marks. Now, as it is an explained question, you don't just need to write what is happening, you need to explain why it is happening. So this is what I've put. Now, obviously, because they are different organisms, their the base sequence is going to be different. Even though they might contain the same proportions of each base, the base sequence is going to be very different. Otherwise, they would look the exact same. This means that different amino acids are encoded as DNA encodes for amino acids. So this comes up later in Unit 4, but a sequence of three bases, or what we call a codon, codes an amino, an amino acid. So if we have a different base sequence, or very different base sequence, different amino acids are going to be encoded, so different proteins are going to be produced. So the organisms are going to look very different. So if we have a look at the mark scheme, two maximum, it says here. So if you put all three of these marking points, you don't get three marks, you can only get a maximum of two. Now the first point here, which we didn't put, is because they have different genes, obviously because of the different base sequence. Now here they would they say reject different alleles. Now as it is a reject question, if you write different alleles, you still put any of these correct answers here, you don't get any marks at all, even if you did put these, because it is reject. So the next marking point here, so bases or, tri or the triplets are in a different sequence such order. So that is what we put. Now they accept base sequence that matters, not percentage. Which is kind of the same as the marking point here. So the next marking point, so different amino acids are coded for, or there is a different amino acid sequence or different protein or different polypeptide or different enzyme. Now here they reject different amino acids are formed. So again, if you put this, but you still put these correct answers here, you don't get any marks at all. And they ignore references to mutations or exons such as non-coding introns. So they ignore that because it's kind of irrelevant to the question it's not relevant to dna structure in this unit so as it is ignore you don't get the mark if you put this but if you put any of these two you still get the mark for that so the next question the dna of the virus is different from that of other organisms. Use the table above, which is this table here, and your knowledge of DNA to suggest what this difference is. Explain your answer. Now, suggest questions often require your own knowledge and your own ideas. So they can be quite tricky sometimes. And also it is explain your answer. So you need to write down why you've suggested something, not just what your suggestion is. So what I've put, is the fact that it's a kind of strange as in the viral DNA the percentage of adenine doesn't equal thymine and guanine doesn't equal cytosine. Now they should be equal if there is base pairing as the, there must be equal numbers of each base pair which suggests or implies that the viral DNA does not have base pairing as many viruses are single stranded. So if we look at the mark scheme, so in viral DNA, A does not equal T or G does not equal C, which we have written. 
They accept similar for equal, which is acceptable as in the human and the grasshopper, they're not exactly the same. So you can write A is not similar to T and you can write G is not similar to C. And also they accept that the virus has more C than G or has more than A than T. So you can write description of what is actually going on in the table. So you need to write no base pairing. Now they underline the word no, so you need to write that word no if you want to get this mark. So you can't write less base pairing, that wouldn't count and you wouldn't get the mark if you wrote that. And the next point that you could have written is so DNA is not double stranded or is single stranded as there is no base pairing. Now as it is two marks you don't get an extra mark if you put all three of these answers, you can only get two marks maximum. So this is a nice and easy question. So figure one shows one base pair of a DNA molecule. Now some mistakes that students sometimes make is that they misread this, so they sometimes read it as RNA molecule. So you need to remember to highlight DNA or RNA if the question says RNA. Now name part F of each nucleotide. So it's nice and easy, just name what it is. Now that's quite an easy one. It's obviously deoxyribose. Don't get it confused with ribose because ribose is what is included in RNA. So the next part of the question, scientists determined what a sample of DNA, that, that a sample of DNA contained 18% adenine. What were the percentages of thymine and guanine in, in this sample of DNA? So obviously the percentage of thymine is going to be the same as the percentage of adenine, which is obviously 18%. And the percentage of guanine I've calculated is 32%. Now how I calculated that is that um, obviously the percentages of the bases have to equal 100%. So if we add 18 and 18 together, we get 36 and I'll just write this out. So we have 18% for adenine and guanine. Black highlighter. So I'll just write 18 times 2. That is really messy, I'm so sorry. Equals 36. Oh, and then we need to subtract 36 from 100, which is 64. So the percentage of guanine and cytosine was equal 64. Now as the percentages of guanine and cytosine must be the same, we then divide 64 by 2 to get 32, as I have written here. So it's quite easy mark scheme, deoxyribose, thymine 18%, guanine 32%. Now this is another quite easy question. Just get my highlighter out again. Get that yellow. During replication, the two strands of a DNA molecule separate and each acts as a template for the production of a new strand. Figure 2 represents DNA replication. Name the enzyme shown in figure 2. So this is this one or this circle here. And that's kind of easy. It is DNA polymerase. This is the mark scheme here, so we've got that one right. Now don't get too confused with DNA helicase. This is not DNA helicase. As you can see, there are two enzymes to form the sugar phosphate backbone of the two template strands. So don't get it confused with DNA helicase, as that unwinds the double helix by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs, which is not what this enzyme DNA polymerase is doing here. Now, the this is quite a tricky question. The arrows in figure two, figure two show the directions in which each new DNA strand is being produced. Use figure one. Figure 2 and your knowledge of enzyme action to explain why the arrows point in opposite directions. Now here's what I put, the DNA strands are anti-parallel, which we mentioned earlier. This means that the shape of the nucleotides at different ends is different, as we have the 3' and 5'. 
at each end, which means that the DNA polymerase can only bind with a three prime site, as we mentioned earlier. As the DNA polymerase has an active site with a specific tertiary structure. Now we have written this last point here because it says to use your knowledge of enzyme action. If you are unsure about enzyme action, please check out my previous video about proteins and enzymes. So if we look at the mark scheme, figure one shows DNA has antiparallel strands, or you can write a description of how they are antiparallel. It doesn't matter which one you put, you still get the marks. Also, figure one shows that the shape of the nucleotides is different, or the nucleotides are aligned different, differently, as the five prime and three prime are at opposite ends. The third marking point here is that enzymes have active sites with specific shape. Now we wrote this one last after this point, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to write the points in a specific order. As long as you write them, you still get marks. Now the fourth marking point is only substrates of complementary shape slash only the three prime end combined with active site of the enzyme slash active site of DNA polymerase, which we put as well. Now as this is a fourth fourth four mark question and there are four points here you need to write all four of these points to get all four marks now this is a simple one draw a box around a single nucleotide obviously a single nucleotide is contains phosphate uh, deoxyribose and the nitrogenous base now i'm not showing them you the mark scheme as it just says a box is drawn around a single nucleotide but I know that this is a nucleotide so you need to draw a box around the phosphate the deoxyribose and the base to get the mark it can be any one of these nucleotides it doesn't matter but you need to get it right now here is something that is fairly similar to the one of the last questions the table below shows a percentage of bases in each of the strands of a DNA molecule Complete the table by adding the missing values. Now we'll start with the top row here. Now this one is obviously going to be 34 as it needs to be equal to the guanine. The cytosine needs to be equal to the guanine on the opposite strand. And obviously the next one is going to be 21 for the same reason. Now the thymine on the top row we've calculated as 29 as if we add 16 and 34 and 21 together we get 71. Now if you take 100 from 71 you get 29 as all the percentages need to add up to 100. Your 100 minus 71 is 29. Now the bottom um, row is made easier now. So this a on strand 2, adenine on strand 2, is 29 as it must equal thymine on the opposite strand. And obviously this is 16 as it needs to equal this 16 on the different strand. So if you look at the mark scheme, we've got all those correct. Now it says here, two rows correct, two marks. And if you only got one row correct, then one mark. So if you got, got say, just one base wrong, in both rows you don't get any marks you need to get entire rows correct to get the marks now here is a bit of a, another tricky one which kind of relates to the opposite arrows question a few slides ago so i'll just get my highlighter out again during replication the two dna strands separate and each acts as a template for the production of a new strand. As new DNA strands are produced, nucleotides can only be added in 5' prime to 3' prime direction as we mentioned earlier. Use a figure in part A and your knowledge of enzyme action, so we need to write about enzyme action again here, and DNA replication to explain why nucleotides can only be added in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now here is what I've put. Now what AQA like to do a lot, as I have mentioned in my videos a lot, is that they like to give you a lot of space, even though you don't need that space necessarily. They kind of like to throw you off. So using our knowledge of enzymes, DNA polymerase is very specific as it has a specific tertiary structure in the active site. 
there's only complementary to the five prime and as a five prime and three prime ends have different shapes as we saw a few slides ago. So here is the mark scheme. Now the first mark is quite easy as it only has a reference to DNA polymerase. So you just need to mention DNA polymerase somewhere to just to get that mark. So which is specific as we mentioned or you can write specific tertiary structure, it doesn't matter, you just need to write somehow that it is specific. Only complementary wave slash bonds of five prime in the strand. The reject hydrogen bond slash base pairing as that is not what the role of DNA polymerase is, as I have already mentioned. The shapes of the five prime end and three prime end are different, or it accepts a description of how different it is. So you can write how the nucleotides are aligned differently. Now I think this is the last question. So the diagram shows part of a DNA molecule. DNA is a polymer. What evidence on the diagram that DNA is a polymer? Now this is quite an easy one. Uh, that polymers are made up of lots of single units or monomers or repeating units. So we write there are repeating nucleotides as the monomers are called nucleotides. So in the mark scheme, it says repeating units slash nucleotide slash monomer slash molecule. It doesn't matter which one of these they put, they accept all of them. Now they allow more than one, but they reject two. Because two nucleotides form a dinucleotide, not a polynucleotide or a DNA strand. So this is an easy one. Name parts of the diagonal label C, D and E. C, which is this bit here, is obviously hydrogen bonds, which are what hold the base pairs together. Part D, which is here, is deoxyribose. It's crucial that you write deoxy, not just ribose, that is it, as it is a DNA molecule. And part E is a phosphate, as it links the adjacent nucleotides and it is denoted by a circle. So C is hydrogen bonds, D deoxyribose. You see here that it that it has underlined deoxy, so it is essential that you write that. Ignore sugar as you need to be specific as you wouldn't be able to tell if it's DNA or RNA if you just put sugar. And E is phosphate. You ignore phosphorus because phosphorus is different from phosphate, as phosphate contains four oxygen molecules and they ignore molecule as that is not specific enough. So that is the end of the video and, it, and that is all I want to say. Um, please comment below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.